Hi everybody, welcome to Heel Heat. This is a special episode, Heel Heat Reviews. Uh, we're going to review a DVD this week. We gave you guys the option. And the winner of that was... ECW The Rise and Fall. The Rise and Fall of ECW. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Pitbull number two. Oh, thanks. That's Gary Rhodes. Thank you very much, Levon. You're welcome, Mama Faye. Exactly. And let's let's get right into it. We got the um, the rise and fall of ECW, uh, one of the most influential companies in the history of wrestling. Um, it goes right into it. You know, you got your guys that were there at WWE at the time, a Dreamer, Paul Heyman, uh, the Dudley, Spike Dudley. Um, Chris Jericho, Taz, Benoit, Benoit, Ron Buffon, and they're all basically the guys you see in the interview. Um, and they go right into it. They start with the the, the origins with uh, Eddie Gilbert and Todd Gordon starting a company as Eastern Championship Wrestling, and then Paul, Paul stepping in and Paul taking over and the thinking that the wrestling business needed to have a change. And at that time, um, the early 90s, it was the wrestling business had become stale just like the music business had. And they say it in the DVD. This is a quote from Paul Heyman. Um, you got ECW was to the wrestling, the cartoon wrestling business, what Nirvana was to hair bands. Oh, exactly. And, and there, there couldn't be a more perfect example. Both of them had a short, short run, but they were more influential than probably anything that's been out since the Beatles or since Lou Thetz. Lou Thetz, yeah. And, back. and you know, and it's it's a perfect example because wrestling at the time had become Doink the Clown, Duke the Dumpster Drozzy, the Ding Dongs, Aggro Shockster, the Shockmaster. You know, oh. it become it became all gimmicks. Everybody had a night job. Wasn't Vince paying you enough? You had yeah, to yeah. be a you had to be a race car what driver. Was, what was the dude, the dirty white boys thing? Uh, it's T L Hopper. Exactly. T.L. Hopper, yeah. And not, the wrestling plumber. Exactly. Well, you know, the thing I loved about this DVD, and, you know, like I said, I'm not a giant, I wasn't like a big old ECW mark. It wasn't my favorite group, not like this guy. But I loved the DVD just for the plain simple fact it was unfiltered. You know, people drop the F-bomb. People say fuck, shit, motherfucker. All that stuff all the time in real life, just like they did on the show. And, you know, it, it sucks that most DVDs that you get now that Vince makes, since Linda's in the politics right now, is all bleeped and blurred, PG, no PG-13 here, They folks. cut out Steve Austin's fingers. Oh, exactly. He's, he goes like this when he's up on the ropes. I mean, come on, we know what this is. We were there. Treat us like adults, damn it. We you watched know, it. It's like this. The re I think the reason that they went to 8 o'clock is because it was past most of their viewers' bedtime at 9, so they had to get some more kids in. But let, let's not even have focus all that. on that. Um, the, the, the fact that this thing was just so raw, and, and it, it really went into depth. It wasn't like, well, ECW was around in 1993, and it was in Pittsburgh, or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it got Greatest shut down. City in the world. Whatever. And it got shut down in 2000, the end. These are some of the guys that worked for us. Period. Exactly. And they, they did. They got into it. They did well. They went in. And uh, another thing that they, they really focused on, and all the guys on the DVD even said it, they really focused on how much influence the fans had on the product. The fans are what made people. The fans exactly. made Tommy Dreamer. They made Raven. They made the Dudley Boys. If the fans didn't hate the Dudley Boys, the Dudley Boys wouldn't be eight-time World Tag Team Champions. With that company. How many times total? 23. Exactly. That's a mark. Anyways... <laughs> Um, right Did now, the tables, Bubba. <laughs> exactly. Right now, I mean, you, we don't have that no more, and that's why we like showing this DVD, is because back then you had a choice. Yeah. Now you don't. You're spoon-fed baby shit. You're, well, you got a choice, but it's TNA and WWE are the choices, and TNA is trying to be WWE. Exactly. I mean, you really don't have a choice. You and, have a choice, but you don't have a choice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your choices are, are Pepsi or Diet Pepsi. Exactly. And and when ECW came around, it was like you had a choice between Pepsi, Coke, and Heineken. Oh yeah, I mean, and it was you could drink the, more adult. You could drink the Heineken if you wanted to. You know, if that was your cup of tea, drink the Heineken, drink the whiskey, Steve or you could go back to the Kool Aid that was being put out by 
WWF at the time. Exactly. You know, I'm not talking shit about Vince. I mean, no, we love Vince. Exactly. I mean, it's it just back then it was a, more of a choice. And Paul Heyman is what? He's a messiah of wrestling. Exactly. I mean, I say that I set him up like that because that's his hero. And I like Paul. Paul Paul is probably one of the biggest geniuses in the history of wrestling. He's one of the smartest minds that's ever done it. Uh, right up there with Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. Um, if if Paul Heyman would have had the bankroll that Vince or Ted Turner had. He would have killed him. Exactly. You know, I mean, there he was would more be cutting no, edge. No, he he was so far ahead of his time that you can look at the guys that are in there now. The guys like Daniel Bryan, um, AJ Styles, uh, CM Punk, exactly, uh, Samoa Joe. All these guys that are huge now were they would be nothing without Paul Heyman's influence on wrestling. Well, and plus with Paul with ECW. You had the best rivalry in wrestling. Not, I mean, and I'm a, I'm a Raven, Mark, and I think the best rivalry was him and Tommy Dreamer. It was fantastic. You had it went over two and a half, three years. Um, you built. Look at how many careers were built: the Pitbulls, the Dudleys, uh, Stevie Richards, Blue Meanie, um, Primetime Brian Lee. And Raven was just an evil genius in the ring. You know, yeah. it was just like anything he could come up with to foil Tommy's plans to get even would work. And, and it, it and wasn't like with WWE where, you know, the good guy has to win. And they even said it on the DVD that Paul Heyman says Raven was the character that inspired him to write better. Oh, exactly. And, you know, you, you don't get that. It, I think, personally, it's probably right up there, rivalry-wise, with Brett and, Mike, Brett and Sean. Yeah. You got Brett and Sean, Raven and Dreamer, and probably Flair and Steamboat are probably the three... Three big, and I just uh, I like the Raven and uh, Dreamer one just for the fact of it is is with Sean and Brett there was legit hate I don't care at certain points with Raven and Dreamer and you know Kayfabe or whatever they were friends. Are you breaking Kayfabe? I'm, I'm breaking Kayfabe. That, <laughs> that uh, right there, Joseph. Joseph Park. I'm a I'm a lawyer. Anyways, keep breaking Kayfabe with me. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, I mean, these guys trust each other to get each other over. And, you know, Brett and Sean, at their point of their rivalry, their high point rivalry, they were already over. Yeah. They, you know, with Raven and Dreamer, that has built their careers on each other. And you know what else I really liked is they showed how ECW, you know, it's thought of as the violent company, but there was so much more. They brought so many different styles. They brought the Lucha Libre to the United mm-hmm. States. They, they brought Real a faster reasons. pace. They brought the... Um, uh, the Japanese style, and they brought, they brought with Taz. They brought the first guy that was doing a UFC style, where he would have wrestlers tap. No one tapped before that. You had to give up by doing the. That was the way you, you used to give up. Time? I guess I didn't lose. Well, you're just gonna hulk up if I do it. I you know I was going to. I'm a motherfucker for that. <laughs> but you know that's that's why that's what you know they brought that in and now everybody taps. Tapping's a thing. You know exactly. Daniel Bryan's shirt says everybody's gonna tap. Well, you got that shirt too. I do got that. Shirt. Right before the yes shirt happened too. Well, you know it's still a cool shirt. Yeah, it's a cool shirt. Um, but, you know you got him. They bring they bring all these styles out and showcase different wrestling and. You know, the, the DVD, it shows it perfectly. You, you, it played to everybody's strengths. You had a guy like like Sandman who had no in-ring talent, but oh, they masked it with a great gimmick and a his great intro, entrance. His entrance was just probably made him. Other than The Undertaker, probably the best entrance in the history of wrestling. The Undertaker does something. I don't care. I know, no, no, I was, was really, I'm not, I'm, you know. It's I would say it's that those two are, are the best two. I mean, I, I still like WrestleMania 12 coming from the rafters. Yeah, but I'm talking about just regular entrances. Ah, no, funny. Yeah, they're really good entrances. I, just, I always have to be an asshole when I'm a heel today. Well, you know, you got that stuff, and then you got even they got. Then you go into they go into it on the DVD the the Raven and Sandman feud, bringing the kid in and the wife. Oh my God, that shit was revolutionary. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one, no one did that before. No one's done it since because of how controversial the angles were. And well, it's like the whole deal with speaking of angles, when you know the crucifixion that didn't get televised because of when uh, Raven crucified Sandman and Kurt pulled a big old bullshit where I'm not going to wrestle for you and this tape better not be shown or I'll call my lawyer. And and then two years later he signs with Vince and they crucify Stone Cold and. 
there's no problem with it at all, Kurt. And at one point, he tried to do it with Stephanie, too, but, you know, yeah. still, I mean, Kurt had no problem with it because he was yeah, a big old fat check. Of course, the check, this check supersedes your religion, doesn't it, Kurt? Yeah. Or was it the pills he was being fed at that and time? Who knows, you know. Yeah, you know. Kurt. Who, who, he don't have the best body this side of a positive piss test, does he? No. <laughs> I'm about to go to the bathroom. Maybe I could give him a clean cup. <laughs> but, awesome. yeah. but, yeah, you got that, the Kurt Angle, hypocrite, you know, stuff. Then you got the guys in Mass Exodus, the WCW raid, when they took the guys like Jericho, like Benoit, Malenko, Guerrero, the public enemy. You know, they took these guys and they just raided it. And WWE did something similar. They took, a, they took their fair share, but... Vince bankrolled ECW to compensate. Yeah, I mean he he did it where Eric Bischoff didn't, and you know Eric Bischoff was part of this DVD, which you know me and George were sitting there talking, it's like you know does he deserve to be part of this DVD? And I, I have to think yes for one reason Vince is on there, and even though Vince owns everything, but see they got guys like Eric Bischoff on there, and then they're ignoring guys that meant so much to the company, like Shane Douglas, probably the greatest champion they had in the company. Um, Todd Gordon, the original owner. Raven. Raven. Uh, Terry Funk. Terry Funk, the guy that, if you watch this DVD, or they if you watch... They praise Terry Funk in this DVD. They praise him. Even if you watch Beyond the Mat, they oh, yeah. talk about how much Terry Funk means that there'd be no ECW without Terry Funk. I mean, guys like Sandman, um, Joel Gertner, Dean Malenko, these guys, huge parts. Um, Too Cold Scorpio. Yeah. Huge parts of ECW that are just missing. That, you know, Steve Carino, Just Incredible, guys like this that just aren't on the DVD. And I don't want to hark on what's bad, because overall it's a wonderful DVD. It's a fantastic DVD for fans of ECW, for people that have never seen ECW before, have no clue, just have heard the, mm -hmm. the letters being chanted. Because to this day, 12 years after it shut down, RIP. they're still chanting the letters. Exactly. ECW still gets one of the biggest chants well, I mean, honestly, like I said, this is uh, out of, you know, one of five stars, this is a five-star DVD. Five. I would definitely agree. It's a five-star DVD. It's a must-have. Whether you're an ECW fan and you just want to relive the, relive the magic, whether you've never seen it and you want to see what the hype was about, I, I would recommend this to everybody. If you have, you know, if you have a teenager that's a wrestling fan, say, look, kid, this is what it can be. Mm -hmm. This is where this is what you're missing right now. This is what made me a fan when I was a kid. These were the good old days. These, <laughs> I mean, and honestly, you, know, you don't want to sound like those guys. You no, know. but it, it honestly was. I mean, honestly, once you sit there and watch this, it it's like, man, why the fuck is John Cena a champion? Right. Why the fuck is this? You know, what what am I watching this shit for? Yeah, well, well, we don't want you to not to watch wrestling, but you know, because yeah, then we don't have a fucking show. Exactly. If you don't care about wrestling, you don't care but about it, our it shit. It just brings the passion back, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I I hope that one day that an attitude error will come again. I, I'm I'm thinking one is. I honestly do. I think that Punk will be the the new leader of the attitude era. And you know, you got Heyman's in there doing his stuff. Maybe they'll give Heyman. You know, because Triple H has taken over more power. Maybe Heyman will get some power. And I know that there was a problem with Stephanie and Heyman. Don't, I know. You don't have to tell me that. But maybe. Triple H knows what's best for the business. He does. And, you know, it's just like what Bubba Ray Dudley said in this DVD. Paul Heyman. Bully it, Ray? It, well, anyways. But <laughs> Bubba Ray Dudley says Are that Paul Heyman just like him? is an evil genius. Yes. And he is. I mean, he just can write anything. If Paul Heyman was a better businessman, ECW would be around right now. You, you have, have CM Punk working for him. Uh, Brian Daniels. Uh, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Chris Hero. Chris Hero. Uh, John Moxley. Mm -hmm. All these guys, probably, there'd be no ring of honor because that was made of guys that, you know, were working Cesaro. for. I think Cesaro would have been a good, would have been a good style for that. I like his style. Oh, he's a good, great wrestler. Wonderful. He's got a great look to him, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's going to go somewhere. It's going to be big. Could have been a contender. Could have been a contender. Could have been a contender. You know, it's a wonderful DVD um, for anybody from the most hardcore wrestling fan to the newest of new wrestling fan. Watch this DVD. See where the Attitude Era started. See where the change went from Coco Beware and Doink the Dumpster Drozzy 
TL Hopper, Sparky Plug, and the all, that, all those bullshit gimmicks, and then see the where Shockmaster. We got what we got now, you know. We see where the reality started coming in. Exactly, where people started being themselves just with the amplifier turned up to eleven. But o overall, I give it a five out of five. You give it a five mm -hmm. out of five. Must buy, must own. If you don't own it already, go on Amazon, go on eBay. Um, find it wherever you can and buy this DVD. Now for the next choices we're going to have, your your choice? Well, for our next, our next review show, which I don't know when we're going to tape it, uh, my choice is going to be 20 Years Too Soon, Superstar Billy Graham Story. And my tag team partner, Pitbull Number 2, Back in Black, the NWO, New World Order. Both of these, you know, good DVDs. Oh, great DVDs! We've watched them both. Um, we want you guys to give your opinion. We're gonna put a, we're gonna put it up for vote on the, on our Twitter, on our Facebook. You can uh, put it in the comments here if you want to watch the Superstar Billy Graham, Twenty Years Too Soon, or Back in Black NWL. Let us know which one you prefer. We let you guys vote on this, and this is what you picked. And we, you know, I, I think you, you, they did a good choice with this pick. I mean, I like both choices we had. Right. But, uh, like I said, this one here is one of my favorite DVDs. Exactly. Mine as well, and I'm a huge ECW mark, so thank you for picking that. Um, but with that said, this has been our first review show here at Heel Heat. My name is George Coles. Gary Rhodes. And we'll see you on the next review. Bye.